Hello, and welcome to this microwave engineering lecture titled Wireless Communications. In this lecture, we will talk about wireless systems. We will also look at the freeze formula, learn about link budget and link margin, and finally, work some examples. Wireless communication is the transfer of information between two points without direct connection. This may be accomplished using sound, infrared, optical, or radio frequencies. However, most modern systems rely on RF or microwave signals, usually in the ultra-high frequency to millimeter wave frequency range. Because of the spectrum crowding and the need for higher data rates, the trend is to go to higher frequencies. RF and microwave signals offer wide bandwidths and have the added advantage of being able to penetrate fog, dust, foliage, and even buildings and vehicles. Today, wireless systems include broadcast radio and television, cellular telephone and network systems, direct broadcast satellite systems, wireless local area networks, paging systems, GPS or global positioning systems, and radio frequency identification or RFID, among others. The classification of wireless systems can be done in many ways. One of these classifications is by user placement. For example, a point-to-point -point system is a single transmitter communicating with a single receiver, like radios, data communication, and backhaul communications. Point-to-multipoint -point involves single transmitters and multiple receivers, like radio or television and multipoint-to-multipoint -multi systems involve multiple transmitters and multiple receivers, like internet and cell phones. Another way of categorizing these systems is by directionality. A simplex system consists of communication in only one direction, like radio, television, or paging systems. A half-duplex system involves communication in two directions, but not at the same time. For example, push-to-talk systems or walkie-talkies. A full duplex system is a simultaneous two-way transmission and reception communication, like cell phone and radio systems. Satellite communications can also be used for voice, video, and data communications. Satellites can be placed in a geosynchronous Earth orbit 36,000 kilometers above Earth, and they have a 24-hour orbital period. When a satellite is positioned above the equator, it becomes geostationary and will remain in a fixed position relative to the Earth. These satellites are useful for point-to-point -point radio links, television, and data communications around the world. It was also used for transcontinental telephone communications. However, undersea fiber optics cables have largely replaced satellites for transoceanic connections. The drawbacks of satellite communications include delay, and reduce signal strength because of their distance to Earth. Now let's look at the freeze formula. A general radio system link is shown here, where the transmit power is PT, the transmit antenna gain is GT, the receive antenna gain is GR, and the received power delivered to a match load is PR. The transmit and receive antennas are separated by a distance R. First, we will look at the power density radiated by an isotropic antenna, reminding that the directivity equals to one or zero decibels and at a distance r, the power density is given by pt over 4 pi r squared, watts per meter squared. If the transmit antenna also has losses, we can include the radiation efficiency given by gt. And so the formula is changed to this. Now, if the power density is incident at the receive antenna, Using the concept of effective area, we can obtain that PR equals the effective area times S average, which is equal to GT PT over 4 pi R squared. 
since the effective area AE is equal to d lambda squared over 4 pi, we obtain the final result for the received power. PR equals GT times GR times lambda squared over 4 pi r squared times PT. This is known as the freeze radio link formula. And it addresses the fundamental question of how much power is received by a radio antenna. This formula should be interpreted as the maximum possible power received, as there are a number of factors that can serve to reduce the received power in an actual radio system, such as polarization mismatch, impedance mismatch, propagation effects, or multipath effects. Now, also notice that the received power decreases as 1 over r squared, as the separation between the transmitter and receiver increases. This dependence is a result of conservation of energy. It may seem prohibitively large for large distances, but in fact, this factor of the space decay of 1 over r squared is much better than the exponential decreasing power due to losses in a wired communication link, like transmission lines, because the attenuation of power on a transmission line varies as e to the minus 2 alpha c. Thus, for long distance communications, radio links will perform better than wired links. Also, as it can be seen from the formula, the received power is proportional to the transmitted power product, PT times GT. In the main beam of the antenna, this can be interpreted as the power radiated by an isotropic antenna with input power PT times GT and is defined as the effective isotropic radiated power or EIRP. Now let's look at the link budget. The various terms in the freeze formula are often tabulated separately in a link budget, where each of the factors are considered individually. Other factors such as line losses or impedance mismatch can also be added to the budget. One of the terms in a link budget is the path loss, and it accounts for free space reduction in signal strength, and is given by L0 in decibels and is equal to 20 log of 4 pi r over lambda. Note that the path loss depends on the wavelength, which serves to provide a normalization for the units of distance for this term. With the previous definition of path loss, we can write the remaining terms of the freeze formula as shown in the following link budget, which we have a list of the different terms of the freeze formula, like transmit power PT, transmit antenna loss, transmit antenna gain, the path loss factor, the atmospheric attenuation, the receive antenna gain and receive antenna loss to calculate PR or the receive power. In decibel watts, we can write the receive power as a sum of all the different terms. Here is also a list of useful power conversions to decibels, like decibel milliwatt or dBm, decibel watt or dBw, and how to convert from dBm to dBw and vice versa. Other terms that may appear are decibel over isotropic or dBi, which refers to the gain of an antenna relative to a hypothetical isotropic antenna, and also decibel over dipole or dBd, which is the gain of an antenna relative to a dipole, in which 0 dBd equals 2.15 dBi. Notice that there are some extra terms in the link budget here, like the atmospheric attenuation, as we remember that additional loss factors can also be included in the link budget. Now let's talk about link margin. In communication systems, it is usually desired to have the received power level greater than a certain threshold to have a minimum acceptable service. This allowance is called link margin and is expressed as the difference between the design value of the received power and the minimum threshold value, and is given in decibels by Lm equals PR minus the minimum PR. It has to be greater than zero. A good link margin provides robustness to account for variables such as weather, buildings, movement of users, and other factors that can degrade the performance of the service. Now let's look at some examples of link budget and freeze transmission formula. 
The direct broadcast system, DBS, in North America operates at 12.2 to 12.7 GHz with a transmit carrier power of 120 watts, a transmit antenna gain of 34 dB and a worst case slant angle of 30 degrees distance from the geostationary satellite to Earth of 39,000 kilometers. The 18-inch receiving antenna has a gain of 33.5 dB. Find the link budget for the received carrier power at the antenna terminals. For the solution, we'll take the middle frequency. So it will be 12.45 GHz. So now the wavelength lambda equals 0.0241 meters. We'll calculate the path loss, again given by 20 log of 4 pi r over lambda. We plug in the numbers and we get 206.2 dB. The transmitted power is 120 watts. Converting that to dB, 10 log of 120 watts equals 20.8 dBW. The gain, GT, is 34 decibels and GR is 33.5 decibels. Now we can group all the terms together in the link budget and then add them up and we will get that the received power, PR, equals minus 117.9 dBW, which is equal to 1.63 times 10 to the minus 12 watts. Now let's look at another example of a communication system design. A communications engineer is tasked to design a communications link at 2.456 GHz. The receive antenna gain is 10 dB and the transmit antenna gain is 18 dB. Both antennas are oriented such that they point at each other with maximum directivity. Assuming no other factors or losses, calculate the maximum distance between the antennas if the minimum power needed by the receiver to overcome the noise is 2 microwatts and the transmit power is 10 watts. Now for the solution, at this frequency of 2.456 GHz, the wavelength is given by this. Now for the freeze formula, PR is given by this. And so solving for R, we obtain this expression. Now let's group all the terms for the freeze transmission equation. We know that lambda is equal to this. PT equals 10 watts. PR equals 2 times 10 to the minus 6 watts. GR equals 10 dB or converted to linear scale equals 10 and GT equals 18 dB or in linear scale 63.1. Now plugging everything in the formula to find R, we get that the maximum distance is given by 547.55 meters. Now the last example involves GPS communications. A GPS system is working at a frequency of 1.57 GHz connected to a satellite located 20 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The transmitter is a dish type antenna with a gain of 30 decibels. The satellite uses a similar dish type antenna with the same gain. Calculate the minimum acceptable transmit power in dBm for this system. If the minimum acceptable power is minus 120 dBm to overcome noise. Now for the solution, we'll find that the wavelength at a frequency of 1.57 GHz equals 0.191 meters. The distance in meters is 20 times 10 to the 3. The antennas are the same, so GR equals GT, which is equal to 30 dB. Converted to linear scale, 30 dB is equal to 1000. The received power should be minus 120 dBm, which converted to milliwatts, we'll see that it's equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 12 milliwatts. Now we can plug all the terms together in the equation, and we obtain that the minimum acceptable transmit power is equal to 1.73 times 10 to the minus 6 milliwatts or minus 57.62 dBm.